Let's talk about some of your old projects. I used to be in a band called uh, ABCD. We were an ACDC tribute. And the Angus, a gentleman by the name of Lauren Old, decided he was going to do something huge. So we uh, spent a whole pile of time uh, actually recording. And uh, I got paid a, a lot of money to do that. Oh, that's always nice. Well, I ended up taking a, a pile of cash, and um, I, now I own a bass because of it. The Fender Franken bass. It's my favorite bass to play until I get my hands on an old school Rickenbacker. But I love it. Anyway, after we finished the recording, and the recording sounds fantastic, we went to the Workman Theater in what used to be, what, well, it used to be part of Cam H on Queen Street. It's an actual theater. And we spent two days there, videotaping and lip syncing. And everyone else can just pretend to play. I can't. You can't fake moving cymbals. I played drums for two days. I was hurting. But the final product looks really good. Really good. And as part of that project, I was interviewed by my bass player. Because I don't talk to Mr. Old anymore. For various reasons. And, uh, yeah, it was a interesting interview. I didn't realize that at the time that my favorite color was blue. <laughs> but it's all fun. Lauren and I were in a Rush tribute about 12 years ago now, called 2012. We spent two years building this thing, and it was great. It was like, once again, taking the sounds very seriously. It was like being in the album while I was jamming in my headphones. And we only ever did two shows, sadly. But we had lasers fog machines, we had side screen video going on. It was huge. It was like being at a mini Rush show. You thinking about doing another Rush show? I recently got contacted by the bass player from 2112, band out of Burlington. I don't know if I want to make that hike. But I, Lauren and I went and saw them <clears throat> excuse me, went and saw them a long time ago. And they were pretty good. They didn't quite light me up. Because I am oh, a... The drummer wasn't right. No, the drummer was pretty good. I mean, just... Overall, <laughs> no offense, dude. I was just trying to compliment Raj. <laughs> I mean, they got everything to about eighty percent and kind of left it there. Whereas I'm trying to find that hundred percent. Yeah, that all started the very first show that I ever did. Band, co band called Karma. I was eighteen. Our first show was in Lisa Buxton's basement. <laughs> My friend Junior shows up between the uh, first and second set and walks up to me and says dude, I was walking up the driveway I heard beneath, between and behind I thought it was the stereo and that's what I've been looking for ever since, from all the musicians I play with people that want to get it to that level where people walk into a bar and go, what kind of an asshole DJ will be playing ACDC right before an ACDC, oh my god, it's them that's what I'm looking for and now, the, the best project on my horizon is with uh, my guitarist buddy Dave Maraska, who does the Eddie Van Halen part in Yankee Rose. Went and saw them Friday night. They kick ass. If you love Van Halen, Dave's the guy. But he's so far beyond just doing Eddie Van Halen. He wants to do really weird music. <laughs> I'll give you the lineup before I mention what we're going to really? do. Really? Isn't it a secret? No, not yet. Wow. We're hoping to have Mr. John Jameson on keyboard. I've heard him do some Rick Wakeman stuff, and that's what I'm looking for. Rick Coombs on vocals. Because he knows Rick Rock. He knows the music, he loves it, he can sing it, and I fucking like that guy. And uh, so far, it's looking as though we're going to invite Mr. Tim Langan to play bass with us. He's a kick-ass player, he loves weird music just like I do, and he's a fantastic human and I love him. I believe he's at the F1, so... Yes, that race went off today, probably on his way back. And the, like the pictures. Yeah, it's good stuff. Tim's a great guy. Oh, I love him. So level-headed, and he always smells good. <laughs> I, like, I like that. 
So what my intention for that band is to be the band will, that will only ever get booked anywhere once. Because the music I intend to do is just so obscure and weird that no one will dance to it. Frank Zappa would love you. Probably. I'm looking at like Rush, Yes, maybe some Genesis, some FM, Gentle Giant, maybe Max Webster. Just lots of strange music. A lot of counting to seven. I like that. And I miss that. I mean, playing in Catalyst is fun. Playing in Thunderstruck is fun. It's gotten to the point where the music is so in my head I don't have to pay attention to what I'm playing anymore. And I can spend a moment and enjoy people enjoying us. Well, it's a, it's a hard, hard road. I've, I've really never dedicated myself to anything in my life. But upon reflection, yeah drums has always been there. I mean, I play guitar, I play bass, I play keyboard, I play trombone, I play baby tuba. Can't get a note out of any woodwind, which is a bummer. I was learning flute for a while. Recently learning to play uh, piano in minor, which is not easy. I'm going to try and learn the church modes. And On top of that, I'm recording all the weird music that's in my head. And it's not always easy, because... The music that's in my head is beyond my ability to play it on guitar, bass, or keyboards. You so I get technology. Well, I'd rather play it myself. Yeah. I mean, I can write it, write it in MIDI, and have my keyboard do it. But that takes a lot of um, the wood out of the out of the music. You know, I want it to be. I mean, ultimately, I want it to be all me, <coughs> and it just becomes a lot less organic at that point. So I want to do it myself and say, I did all of this. And then there's the production and the engineering and the mastering and all that stuff that I'm still learning my way through. Not an easy process because no one's ever shown me a damn thing. People I asked just kind of did it and then ran away. So I didn't really learn anything. But it's all fun. I'm just sitting in my place. Well, let's hope this promotional video... I'm hoping. ...features those skills and you get discovered... Who? Uh, anybody who uh, actually, I have a, a, a whole pile of like almost one and a half to two minute snippets. Ultimately, one of the things I would like to do is sell these little snippets to TV shows as theme music or bumper music. I have a page on SoundCloud. Just type in Rogue Drums, R O G U E D R U M S, Rogue Drums, all one word. I have a bunch of songs up there. And I really don't know. I just want to get paid for it. You know? I don't want to have to go find a job again. Or find a job I don't like. Okay, right, so should we go in and uh, listen to some music? Yes. Let's do that. Maybe even play some. Looking forward to it. It's Kick jam ass. night here at McGrady's. Yes. Come on by. Plenty of time to jam with Raj. Sunday nights. 7 to 11. Thanks for the interview, Raj. Love you, baby. See you on Friday. Port over.